all right so this is lecture 20 right okay so so right now we're looking at the isi case when you can't assume that your channel is ideal anymore and nyquist criteria is not satisfied by the received uh, pulse spectrum so you will have isi necessarily okay so i'm going to once again draw this picture okay so you have a symbol sequence sk so you usually think of this as a finite sequence say length l symbol sequence okay so at the transmitter first thing you do is send it through a transmit filter okay so you send it through a transmit filter and then uh, well in in reality if you're doing pass band transmission what should you do next you should do up conversion right so imagine g of t is, is uh, i mean s of k can be complex you usually think of g of t as real but s of k is complex and you do an up conversion you go to some frequency and then you channel actually is there in that frequency and then you do a down conversion back so instead of doing all that we do a pass band equivalent picture where we simply say we have a complex base band channel c of t okay so this is complex base band okay and then noise gets added to this okay once again this is actually the complex base band equivalent of noise okay so all these things are there one can do that all right so here this is your received signal r of t okay so we initially started off by saying what do you do with r of t we thought of doing a minimum distance receiver from there we were able to see that convolving with h star of minus t seems like a very natural thing to do and sampling at sample rate and then we also later on saw that if you want to do an optimal projection onto an orthonormal basis also you can convolve with h star of minus t then sample at symbol rate and then do a discrete time filter okay so that's the those are all equivalent ways of thinking about it and uh, i'm going to do that next okay so the first operation that you would want to do is to filter with h star of minus t what is h of t okay and sample at signal rate symbol rate okay so so this immediately means uh, c of t should be known at the at the receiver okay otherwise you can't hope to implement h star of minus t at the receiver okay so typically uh, the way i've written it down it looks like h star of minus t if at all it's implemented in the receiver it's going to be in analog okay so you never do things like that how do you do it over sample r of t okay sample it to a very large amount and then you do even that filtering by h star of minus t in in digital okay so you, you never do these things in analog because you can't you can't control the filter shape and all that very easily right so you do kt of course once again the sampling here there might be a delay to accommodate for various things okay so you do that you get yk okay and this yk has a very simple description the way i wrote it down okay so yk will actually be sk convolved with the autocorrelation of h okay so it has isi on both sides okay yk will depend on sk sk minus 1 sk plus 1 sk minus 2 sk plus 2 all these things in a symmetric way rho h of k okay so it seemed like one one thing to do to get rid of the anti causal isi was to filter with 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star how did i get that so you look at the spectrum of rho h of k Okay, so you see rho h of k is actually what it's uh, it's h of t convolved with h star of minus t sampled at k t. Okay, so that's rho h of k. You do a Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier transform, of course. You get s h of e power j 2 pi f t. Okay, which would be a valid power spectral density for which you can do spectral factorization. Okay, you would get. spectral factorization to get a minimum phase m right okay so this actually corresponds to mk which is monic causal and minimum phase loosely minimum phase i'm going to simply say minimum phase remember that the zeros can be on the unit circle okay so what was gamma square gamma square if you write it down will work out to exp 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi 
log sh of e power j theta d theta okay so this is the formula for gamma squared okay so it will work out like that okay so if if, if your sh of z is rational then you can do the minimum phase factorization in a simple way okay so you simply take all the poles and zeros in m of z inside the unit circle and then half the zeros on the unit circle into m of z and the remaining will automatically come in m star of 1 by z star because sh of e power j 2 pi ft is real and non negative on the unit circle okay so those things will work out and gamma square you can choose suitably and here the gamma square will work out to this formula all right so if you see all this then you notice that you can do a filtering here with 1 by gamma square m star of e power j 2 pi ft okay so the whole, however small i write it it ends up overshooting so i'm going to simply say m star of 1 by z star okay so hopefully hopefully it's clear to people m star of 1 by z star works out to this this filter and out of this filter you get zk okay so we saw that this entire operation filtering by h star of minus t sampling and then filtering with 1 by gamma square m star of 1 by z star was nothing but doing an orthonormal projection right on the signal space corresponding to the signal received at r of t okay the signal component r of t defines the signal space on that signal space if you do an orthonormal projection you would be doing the exact same thing but the difference from what we did before was c of k will still contain isi you can't get rid of is because your pulse does not satisfy the nyquist criteria in general so it can't get rid of the isi in total so z of k will contain isi now but only causal isi because i picked my m suitably okay so z of k zk you can show this is very important zk you can show is sk convolved with mk plus nk remember all these guys are complex now see sk is complex mk is complex nk is also complex okay so each component of nk will be iid normal with mean zero and variance n not by 2 gamma square okay right each in each dimension n of k will be like this okay so that's the orthonormal projection if you project into uh, project with an orthonormal basis every dimension will be normal with zero mean and variance equal to the the variance that have that was there before okay initially you might think the variance is different but after you filter with h star of minus t you have a gamma square uh, entering the no actually it becomes colored and then you have a 1 by gamma square so that that will multiply it out and you get it so but those constants are irrelevant don't worry about this n not by 2 gamma square okay only in an exam problem it, those things will become relevant okay in reality it's some noise with some variance it's just the only thing you worry about okay you measure it in practice and then you know what your snr is okay so nothing it's not too significant there okay so this model is very very crucial so what people do usually is they say they will denote okay so you remember what we did for the non isi case we went from a receive transmit constellation directly to a receive constellation from sk to sk plus noise okay so we went there directly so now people usually bunch up this whole thing together and get what's called a discrete time model for isi okay you go from sk to zk directly and the only thing that happens from sk to zk is what filtering by mk and addition of noise which is iid zero mean some variance okay so that's the discrete time isi awgn model and this is very very popular in practice okay so you'll see most people when they do simulation studies and uh, and in fact even in practice you always work with this model okay you don't you don't look at the whole system in complete detail if if your channel is known at the receiver you can equivalently work with this model okay so where s of k goes through mz mz is what monic causal loosely minimum phase okay so mk is that and what you get out is going to be 
uh, SK convolved. Okay, I have to add noise. Sorry. Followed by addition of noise, which is NK, to get uh, ZK, which is SK convolved with MK plus NK. Okay, so this guy is IID normal in each dimension. Okay, so with me zero mean and variance sigma square, and this is the BK. Okay, which is received value, received symbol value, signal value. In the non-ISI case, we simply had S of k plus noise. Now you can't do that. You will have S of k convolved with MK. Okay, right? MK is causal and all that. So this BK can be written in a very nice form. Okay, so you can write it as k equals zero to infinity m. Okay, l I think. Uh, L equals 0 to infinity. I want to write it so that I get. Uh, okay, so let me write it this uh, way. ML S K minus L. Okay, I can do this because I know MK is causal, so only the positive things will come. Okay, so you notice B of 0 contains components from S of 0 and something before and we didn't transmit anything before s of 0 so nothing else will come okay b of 1 will con contain s of 1 and then s 0 as well b of 2 will contain some component from s 2 s 1 as well as s 0 okay so of course you can't observe b of k directly you can observe only b of k plus noise okay so that's the only thing you observe but b of k is the received signal value okay so now it's possible to draw things like received constellations. Okay, so your transmit constellation was nice S of k and say some BPSK, QPSK or 16QAM. Your received constellation, if you plot the BK, will no longer be the same thing. So it will be something else. We'll, we'll try and we'll try that exercise soon enough. Okay, we'll see some examples where you plot the received constellation, it will be different. Okay. But one thing I know definitely is the noise that gets added to BK is IID Gaussian zero mean. Okay, so that those are all nice things to do, which we can use in our detector. Okay, so that's the that's the overall idea. So most simulations that people do for ISA is AWGN, it will always be in this model. Nobody is going to simulate that whole thing with G of T and C of T and H star of minus. It's not necessary because the whole thing is equivalent to a discrete time model, and a discrete time model is much easier to simulate in software to do, right. So you just and it's all symbol rate. Okay, so you don't need to do too much of no need to have too much memory and all. So this is how people usually simulate. Okay. Any questions on how this model was derived? Okay, and the crucial assumption, of course, is you know H of T. Yeah, right. If you don't know H of T, you can't really do it at the receive. Okay. So if you don't do that, then your model will be different. We will see this, those cases later. For now, we'll assume it's known at the receive. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? It's okay. Everything is fine. All right. So the next thing I want to do is to look at uh, okay. So I want to look at the detector, but before that, okay, let me just quickly do a few more things that is common in practice when people think of uh, simulating such things. So what what what's usually done is in when you when you're thinking of a channel M of Z, uh, you want to normalize M of Z so that the energy is one in M of Z. Okay, so there's a good reason why you want to do it. So typically, normalize such that summation over k mod mk squared equals 1. Okay, so the reason why you want to normalize this is now energy in sk will be equal to energy in what? bk. Okay, so once you normalize this mk to have unit energy, there's no energy artificially being introduced in your model. Okay, and that will cause some confusion because if you, for instance, scale by 10, okay, to get from SK to BK, it's not, it's not right. Okay, so it's those noise is not getting scaled. It's just scaling this, and that doesn't cause all kinds of confusion. Okay, so in your model, so it's always good to normalize your channel in the ISI model to unit energy, and they don't, then you don't have to worry about differences in transmit constellation and receive constellation energy. It's all normalized and it's nice, so you do that. Okay, so this will make this will make 
the so if i do this one property of m of z might be lost what is that property by the normalization monic is the only thing that will be lost other things won't be lost okay so one by just scaling nothing will happen but the monic property might be lost okay so that's the only thing to keep in mind so this is done to make energy of sk equal to energy of bk okay so one thing you can do for instance if you are worried about snr how do you define snr now okay energy in s divided by okay 2 times sigma square the reason why i am doing 2 is what because i want to account for both dimensions when i do energy in s i am going to find energy in two dimensions so i want to divide by noise energy in two dimensions but even if you don't put the two the only thing that will happen is your entire curve will shift by 3 db left or right but if you plot uncoded versus coded or something comparisons will still be valid as long as you stick to the same mode okay so it's not a big deal but uh, it's usually there's a two factor okay so snr is defined as in your model es divided by 2 sigma square okay so if you want to think of it as n0 by 2 gamma squared then it will become and not by gamma square in the denominator so gamma also enters the picture if you if you want to go back to the continuous time model but like i said it's not too important to worry about those kind of these things all right so now let's see a few examples of this discrete time model and how things work out the reason why i'm doing it is i have to solve the next problem okay so i have not solved the receiver completely what is the next step detection right so if i've got the z case i have to now detect my s case okay and it's not the same as before i can't do independent detection for each k because i've got isi okay so i have to detect for the whole thing together so how do i do the detection is the next question for that we have to understand the discrete time model very well okay so for that we're going to see a few examples and then i'll give you a nice view of the discrete time model which will help us move to a detect okay so that's the kind of road map roughly so let's see so here here are a few examples first example i'm going to take for mz is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 z inverse okay so in fact i might even violate the minimum phase criteria okay so when i pick mz okay so so that's because i don't want to think of minimum phase when i come up with examples i want to be able to just quickly come up with examples in reality you might have a minimum phase thing okay so i'll just quickly come up with examples don't shout at me if it's not minimum phase okay okay so so now what's uh, okay so so a couple of other things i need to define okay so okay so if m of z is this zk becomes what zk becomes 1 by root 2 sk minus 1 by root 2 sk minus 1 plus nk right this k is my what i have called as bk which is the received signal value okay after the just the isi okay so so this is nice so if i want to now get a hold of the received constellation and all that i have to fix the transmit constellation okay so my simple my simple example first time i'll take x to b bps okay so which is the simplest example one can take okay so if it's bps k what will be the received constellation okay i'm drawing two axes i actually don't need two axes it's only one dimension it's all real but what will be the values when the received constellation yeah so uh, there's one by root 2 floating around so just be careful about that so sk and sk minus 1 can take four different possibilities so technically there should be four different points in your in your received constellation but some of them might overlap with each other okay so less than or equal to four points that i know for sure okay so the, after that is just a question of substituting the different possibilities and finding different bks if i substitute both to be equal to 1 1 what will i get zero okay so i get zero as one point if i substitute both to be minus one what do i get zero again so that there is an overlap okay but that need not necessarily happen in general okay for a constellation it can happen what are the other two values root 2 and minus root 2 right am i right okay so that will be your kind of received constellation okay for each k okay but remember each k is not independent okay right do you agree with me if i give you the constellation or if i give you the actual occurrence of bk at k the next occurrence is closely controlled it can't be anything else that you want okay okay so keep that in mind so it's all 
each k it's not independent and the transmit side it is independent right i do a constellation and for each k i pick a point independently from that constellation here at the receiver i don't do that i only pick the transmit and the receiver comes about okay so that's important when i draw the constellation remember that it's not independent for each k okay all right so let's do a slightly more complicated case we'll do uh, the constellation the receiver transmit constellation being qpsk okay so i want you to think for a while consider all possibilities and draw the received constellation it's a good exercise It'll give you some clarity about what's going on okay first of all how many points do you expect 16 points right okay so those are my points i have uh, how many points do i have about 9 points am i right okay and uh, that's where they occur okay so each of these guys the squares will be 1 by root 2 plus or minus 1 plus or minus j okay so those are the four points all right so one interesting exercise which is a standard quiz question once again is to find energy of a particular received constellation at 1k okay so how do you find energy now Okay, so remember, all these points will not occur with equal probability. Okay, so you have to be careful. SK occurs with equal probability. For each of these points, you have to compute probability. For instance, in the BPSK case, it's easy to figure out what the probabilities are. What are the probabilities? Yeah, the probability half here, one by four here, one by four here. So you do that and compute. You'll get your energy back again to be one, same as before. Okay, so but but you have to do this computation. So you have to compute the probability at which with which each point might occur. It's not uniform now. Okay. because of the way in which my sk is worked out all right so this is an interesting exercise and you can see this exercise is going to get complicated when what happens when will this exercise begin to get complicated there are two things when there are more taps okay when you have more taps in your mfz this is going to get complicated and then the second possibility is when there are more symbols in your transmit constellation Okay, so in fact, you can get an exact relationship for the maximum number of points in your received constellation in terms of these two things. Okay, so you can show if you have a mu tap m of z. So what do I mean by a mu tap m of z? M zero, m one z inverse, m mu z power minus mu. Okay, so this is what I mean by saying mu tap. So when I say one tap, it's not a scalar multiple. Okay, it's actually one ISA. So if I want to say multiplication by a constant i'll say zero tap okay so it's a constant thing okay so remember this notation this can get confusing because different people use different convention here my convention here when i say mu tap is mu plus 1 order okay so you've got m0 through m mu okay so you remember that okay so if you have this and if your transmit constellation is x then number of points in received constellation is less than or equal to what yeah size of x power mu okay so it grows exponentially in mu okay so that's a bit of a problem okay you have to be worried about this problem because if you want to do uh, detection on the zk and if m of z has too many taps 
you have to worry about too many points in your constellation. Mu plus one, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that a mu plus one? Okay, yeah, that's a mu plus one. Okay. So, so I have to worry about too many points in my received constellation, and it's it, it's going to get quickly complicated. Okay, so that's something that uh, that you have to keep in mind. And today everybody wants very high spectral efficiency, so people are using 64 qam, 32 qam without any problem. So at least 16 qam is being used. So when you have 16 qam, and then you have and you want to signal very fast, which means you have to face a lot of ISI. Okay, and you have 10 taps. You're pretty much done. You can't even hope for doing any such uh, keeping track of any such received constellation. Okay, so those are problems, and we have to address those problems as we go along. For now, I'll assume it's manageable and talk about the ideal detector. Okay, so I'll talk about the ideal detector first, and we'll quickly see the ideal detector is not that implementable as it becomes more complicated, and then we'll uh, worry about other things. Okay, so I want to do one more example. Okay, just to show you. That this can get a little bit more painful, and uh, it's also an example which I'm going to uh, have around for the other uh, other things as we go along. So this is the second example. Once again, I have no idea if this is a minimum phase uh, thing or not, but I know it's monic and it's not. I mean, it's it's FIR as in it's causal, and it is normalized. Okay, so that's the only thing I care about. I don't know if it's minimum phase or not. Okay, so that's my m of z. Okay, so you can see it's normalized. Okay, suppose I say x is BPSK. Okay, so I want you to plot the received constellation. Okay. Okay, so the same exercise if you try with BPSK, it will get even more complicated and ugly, but it's possible to do it. Okay, so you will get uh, many more points, but BPSK is not too bad. Okay, one can do it. What would you get? Okay, so there are eight possibilities. One plus one by root two. Okay, and then minus one minus one by root two. Okay, and then one by root two minus one by root two. Any other possibility? Okay, so minus one plus one by root two. 1 minus 1 by root 2. Any other possibility? That's it. Okay, only 6 points. Okay. Right? So one can plot these things. Okay, so you can do uh, 1 by root 2 is what? 0 0.7, right? So it's closer to 1 than 1 minus 1 by root 2. So you'll have, you'll have points like this. Okay, so I do that. Get six points, and uh, probabilities you can compute. You can compute the receive energy and all that. Okay, so you try for QPSK, it becomes a bit more of a headache. Okay, so it's difficult to do these things and keep track of these things. Okay, but simulations you can do very fast and quickly generate this. Okay, so all right. So so I'm thinking. I mean, I want to return your answer scripts and discuss some things there as well. So I think I'm going to stop here for this class. I'll return your quiz answer sheets and then we'll pick up from here in the next class.